was 1867, when three prospectors discovered what appeared to be an ancient excavation near what is now known as Agua Fria, a deep river canyon cutting north to south through Black Mesa. As they descended deeper into the opening, they found what appeared to be ancient tools and a large pillar of rock leading to a sizable vein of quartz. Upon closer inspection, the quartz vein contained visible gold, and excitement quickly grew. After a few hours, multiple repurposed coffee sacks filled with high-grade gold ore were lifted up and out of the cavern and later processed to reveal nearly a thousand ounces of gold. True or false, the story of the Aztec mine quickly spread and before long the area was covered in claims and the town of Richenbar was born. It was later revealed that indeed the deposit was so rich some folks thought that it might be the death of gold as chunks of quartz filled with gold bands wider than a man's thumb were excavated from the mine. Fanciful tales of the newly discovered deposit quickly made their way across the nation. One story in particular told of an 11-ton train car filled with sacks of high-grade ore produced over 6,000 ounces of gold. These stories caught the attention of multiple investors, and by 1905, the Rich and Bar Mine Company began full development of the property. The mine sits on a vein that strikes north to south with a near 90 degree dip. Its main Zeich shaft, named after George Zeich, is 500 feet deep with nearly 3,000 feet of underground workings. Today the shaft is flooded at the 200 foot level, but open stopes and cuts can clearly be seen on the surface. The largest stope, rising from the 140 level, is 65 feet long by 55 feet high and 14 feet wide stretching through an area of Precambrian schist. From about 1905 to 1908, the Rich and Bar Mines Company carried on extensive development work at the property. A 20 stamp mill was constructed and according to local reports, mined some 8,000 tons of ore that contained about $6 per ton in gold together with a small amount of silver. Prior to 1922, the mine was operated by three different companies, and in 1917 was dewatered and retimbered for further development on its lower levels. Early in 1933, the Sterling Gold Mining Corporation obtained control of the property, and prior to May 1934, made some surface improvements and carried on a little underground work that employed eight men. There was at least one fatal mining accident at the Rich and Bar mine. Shortly after setting explosives, Ed Barton was being hoisted by a looped rope to the ladder of the shaft. Unfortunately, when he tried to jump from the rope to the ladder, he missed and fell back down the shaft. A minute later, the explosives went off, and when the superintendent was lowered to the bottom of the shaft, he found Barton's body bloodied and covered with rock. According to the local paper, it was only his fourth day working at the mine, and he was buried on the hill directly above it. The Rich and Bar Mine is a site rich in history, but like all mines, that history eventually came to an end. Operations ceased in 1939, but sporadic work did continue until 1957. Eventually, the mill was disassembled, and the head frame was torn down and repurposed, as well as all the other buildings on the site. What remains today is nothing more than old foundations, pylons, and stacked rock walls constructed by miners long gone. The Rich and Bar Mines underground workings have never been video documented. So today, on Abandoned and Forgotten Places, I will recon the site to see if I can find a way underground and into the depths of this historic mine.
All right, guys, let's get a look around here before it gets too windy. We're coming in at about 10 or 11 o'clock right now. Those afternoon thermals are going to start kicking in, and I'm not going to be able to fly this drone anymore. It's going to get tossed around a little bit too much. So let's buzz around here and uh, see if there's anything that's uh, interesting enough to be able to get out, get the handheld camera, walk around and get a closer look at it. Like petroglyphs, for example. I know that there's some around here because I've seen them on uh, other folks' videos that I've watched on YouTube. But first, we're going to take a look at this mill site right here. We'll get a closer look at that. Oh, yeah. A lot of work goes into uh, building those walls and hand stacking that rock like you're seeing right there. What's up in this little cubby? Let's look in there. Yeah, I remember folks looking in that right there um, on other videos. Just part of the foundation of the mill structure. You can see what it was. There was a tank on top of that at one time before it was uh, taken away and scrapped. So that's what we had going on here was a tank. And underneath there was probably a valve right there where the pipe went down from the bottom of the tank. Okay, let's keep looking around here. We've got a terraced mill site. which is hard to resist for some people in spray paint cans, if you know what I mean. And looking at the old photographs, you can tell that at one time there was a building right over the top of this, a large uh, tin structure, as well as another building that was right up here. You can clearly see it on the old photo. Yeah, let's get a better look at that. Wonder if that's the remnants of an old chimney right there. Let's take a closer look. I'm not seeing a hole in the bottom. Not 100% sure what it could have been. Okay, let's keep looking around. So all those buildings were throughout this area. You can clearly see all the foundations, the pylons, the different things that were inside the mill site for crushing up that rock before they sent it down over uh, the various uh, concentrating uh, measures throughout the, uh, throughout the mill. Now over here is the, the biggest waste rock pile. I mean, let's get a better look at this thing. So this shaft goes down 500 feet, uh, but according to the last person that was down in it, it's flooded out at the 200. So from 200 down to 500, it's all water. And that makes sense because the water table is sitting just below the depth of the canyon behind this location. Now, let me give you a closer look here at the main shaft. Now, there's so much rock and debris down in the bottom of that because it acts like a funnel. Think of the, uh, the Sarlacc pit in uh, Star Wars Return of the Jedi. That's what you kind of have here. If you fall in, you're never coming out again. But here's the thing. So earlier I tossed a rock down in there and I heard the rock hit maybe at only 50 to 100 feet down. That's because of all the thunderstorms that have come through here. Uh, debris falls down from where the collar used to be and slowly but surely you end up with a snow cone shaped debris field down in the bottom slowly filling up the the shaft higher and higher. All right, let's keep looking down here. What do we have? If we get a little lower and get out of this wind, I'm getting tossed around a little bit. So here's another place where we had a tank. That's what we have here, similar to the first one that we just looked at. And it was a settling tank of some kind because you can see the sediment still sitting on top. Look at look at the sediment right there. Let's look down in there. Yeah, great place for rattlesnakes hiding down in there, huh? And then when they remove the tank, let's back up a little bit. Oh, come on, wind. <laughs> 
And then when they remove the tank, uh, which is obviously made out of steel that they could recycle, what's left over is the sediment sitting in the bottom. Okay. All right, we have something over here I want to show you real quick. We got to get a closer look at the uh, the tails that came off of this mill site. That would be right down here. So since they were able to pump water via a well or directly from the mine itself to be used in the mill, then those fine tails came down this wash into what you see right here. And slowly but surely they built up behind a dam that they made. Now it wouldn't surprise me, you can see the, you can see the dam right here. Let me get in behind it. Whoa, whoa, come on now. Yeah, with these little drones, they're they're wonderful, but boy, with just a little bit of wind, they'll toss you around real good. Okay, so yeah, they, at one time they had a dam. It makes me wonder if it, if the dam was removed with the silt left behind it. Um, I lost my train of thought. I was just going to tell you something, and it just went poof. Now it's all gone. And maybe it'll come back to me in a second. I guess that's what you call old age, huh? <laughs> all right well the tales like that kind of give you an idea of uh just how much material was crushed and ran through this mill and that's a fairly decent size so they definitely put a lot of material through this mill we got another shaft over here let's get a better look at this one oh yeah uh-oh, I'm running out of battery. Okay, guys, give me just a second. I got to fly back home. Hopefully I can make it without crashing. Drop another battery into this drone and I'll be right back. Okay, there we go. Back again. Woo, that was a close call. I just barely made it back to Bob with 5%. <laughs> I got to do a better job of keeping an eye on that. One of these days, if I'm not... I'm going to run out, not be able to make it back. And Well, there's a function on the drone that you can use to uh, help find it if you do crash it. I just hope I never have to do that. Anyways, where were we? So over here, now this is what I really want to see. Um, let's see if we can track it down. I know it's over this direction. This is the open stope that I want to get a closer look at. I don't think it's right here. I think, see, we have two of them. There's one to the left, one off to the right. It's the one off to the right that maybe I could rope into. Let's look at, let's take a closer look at this one. Yeah, it's just too dark down in there to really get a good uh, look. So we'll get out, we'll, we'll get a closer look at that one with the handheld camera. Let's get over here to the one that I, I thought that I might be able to rope into. That's another reason why I wanted to come out to this mill site today is because, see see what you got going on here? So we have an open stope, and you know the open stope is gonna lead down to a drift level, and then the drift level will lead down to the, to the shaft. So let's get a real good look at this from the air. Yeah, you could easily rope in right there. I wonder what, uh, I wonder how much debris is between here and the drift. Let's, let's look, let's get a little lower. Look at the vein, you can see the vein right there that they're chasing. It's only about maybe a foot wide, but I can tell as I get a little closer here in this stope, let's, let's keep going. Don't crash, buddy. Okay, yeah, there's the vein. Oh, there looks like a little hole down in there. Okay, let's turn around. What else do we have in this open stope? Is there, can you get down right there? Is that a little crack you can wiggle through? Kind of looks like it right there. See that, guys? Yeah, that has me wondering if you could just kind of rope down off this edge off the right-hand side over there. See that? They see, see how there's some cables? Maybe somebody threw over the side, they were thinking the same thing. And if that went down to a drift level, then maybe the drift level would go back and meet up with the vertical shaft. 
Okay, well, we'll definitely get out, walk around, and get a closer look at that. Okay, now, by watching different uh, YouTube videos of people that have been out here, somewhere right around out here is an outcropping of rocks uh, where there's a whole bunch of petroglyphs. There's another foundation. Let's stop for a second. Right here. So we had a building out there. Any buildings out this direction? Isn't that a beautiful view, guys? Oh, yeah. Yeah, look at here. See? This is the uh, mill site for the oldest part of this mine. Right there. I remember seeing that on Google Earth. This is the very first mill site. Early 1900s. With two tanks. Let's get a better look at it there. Yep. Three tanks, as a matter of fact. All right. Let's fly back up and over it. And we were looking for that outcropping of rocks with all of the uh, petroglyphs. It was somewhere around this ridge. I guess I'm just going to have to get out on foot and see if I can find it. We can fly over here to uh, the top of this hill. We got 65% on the battery. I can tell I'm going right into the wind because I'm just barely kind of inching along here. Let's see if those that outcropping was right over here. We'll go up to the top of the hill. Now in that old photograph on the top of this hill, there was some kind of a tower. Let's get a better look. Oh, I just love the view out here. Isn't that, isn't that pretty? Wow. Oh, they had another tank. That's what I was seeing in that photo. All right, let's see if I can rotate around it. Yeah, that's what that was. They had another tank up there. Okay, let's head back over here to the mill. All right, guys, so I think that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm just going to head back over there, uh, grab the handheld camera. We're going to do a little bit of walking around and uh, get a closer look at this site. This is just really neat. It has a lot of history to it. Uh, we're probably not going to get underground today, but I, I definitely got to get a closer look of everything that's going on here. Okay? All right, so that's what we're going to do. Let's get the drone landed. We'll head down that road you see there in front of you and get back over to the mill site. We'll start doing a little bit of walking around. Okay, guys, I'll see you over there. Okay, first things first, I want to get a good look at this. Let's see what we have here. Oh, look at the vein. Yeah, you can clearly see it right there along that wall. Boy, oh boy, you would not want to fall down into that. Holy cow. Let's look down in here. Now, you see what's dangling off that fence over there? That's the wing to some kind of a bird. I'm not sure if it's an owl or a hawk, but it went down in there when it flew out. See that? Let's get a closer look at it. It got hung up on this fence, unfortunately. Yeah, and met its demise. Now, uh, let me see here. I need to find a, a rock. I want to listen to how far down that goes. Let's step back a second, grab a rock. There we go. Oh, maybe not that one. How about this one? Oh, there's a lot of quartz. See that? Look at all the, look at all the uh, quartz float laying on the ground here. But what we have here, uh, this is definitely part of the stope that's linking up between this one and the other one. All right, here we go. I know it's dark, you can't see it, but you're just gonna have to take my word for it. Two, one, go. It's about 50 to 75 feet down. Let's see. Let's look over here. Yeah, we've got support stalls right there too. Well, that'd be a crazy one to rope into because what you got once you get past that ledge, then you're going to be doing some dangling. But you know darn well, if you could get down in there, uh, it's going to meet up with a drift, which will meet up with the shaft. Okay, let's go this direction and look at the bigger one. 
the one I'm heading to now is the one I was telling you about uh, where those cables were dangling off to the side. Let's see if that's something that you could get into. Yeah, this is much bigger. The thing about looking at these on the camera is the camera just doesn't do it justice how big, how the size of this thing. We'll look down in there. Yeah, right over there. Hmm. Okay, let's keep walking around here. I'm gonna have to go over on this side. See, what I wanted to do, getting started on this uh, winter's adventures, is do a lot of recon, like, again, what I'm doing with this video, and finding neat places that Laura and I can rope into. This is another one. This is an easy one to rope into. Absolutely. Look at that. See that? See where the cable is? Let me point off to the side here, run it out. I could just put old Bob right there, go hook off of his bumper, and bingo. Right down in there. And hopefully, if all that scree didn't make its way too far down, that one might just go directly to a drift level. Now there's another one right here, but that was the one we saw with the drone. It looked like it could have been pinched off. But you know darn well, this this uh, open stope and the one we just looked at back there, both of them are gonna link up. So we're gonna keep this one on the menu. Laura, if you're watching, this one we can easily rope into and then we'll head down there and see if we can can't get to a drift level. All right, guys, uh, turn it around here. I'm gonna head back over to the mill site and we're gonna get a closer look at things over there. I'll see you over there. Well, hey guys, check this out. So every now and then I'm out in the middle of nowhere. Now, typically I do my exploring on Mondays and Tuesdays because then there's less people out in the field, but every now and then you just bump into someone. So I come around the corner of the mill site and here is, what's your name? Nikki Smith. Nice to meet you, Nikki. I'm Gly. Nice to meet you. Uh, my channel is Abandoned and Forgotten Places. Uh, I've been doing my YouTube channel now for like five years and that's what I do. I run around, I document mine sites. Uh, now my fans, my subscribers, they love it when I get underground, but there's a lot of you that like it when I do topside explorers, and that's why I'm doing today. So it's kind of a topside explorer with a little bit of recon for a future underground, and that's why I'm out here today. So that's pretty cool bumping into you. It's cool bumping into you. So you like doing this kind of stuff too. I do like doing this kind of Isn't stuff. Isn't it fun? Isn't it, it? It's fab. It's just it's so much. It's so much fun because you look for the clues. Uh, what the miners used to do and, and you kind of put those clues together and extrapolate uh, exactly what they were doing out here. It's one hell of a life. I'm glad I didn't live it. It was tough back then. <laughs> it was tough. It was super tough. That was it was a hard life back then and uh, but we but you know folks like us we like to bring that stuff to you guys and uh, that's why we're out here. So it was nice to meet you. You too. All right well I'm going to continue to run around and point the camera at a few more things. So what can I say? Enjoy your day. Thank you. Okay. Okay, guys, looking off this direction, you can see where uh, what we flew over earlier. Those were the holding tanks, the cyanide leaching tanks with all that sediment down there. And now I'm standing on top of the mill site looking down. I'm on top of that wall where all of the graffiti was. And I'm just kind of observing things to see if I can find uh, maybe a date on the edge of the concrete or something like that. I haven't seen anything yet. So I think what I want to do now, guys, is I want to start looking for those petroglyphs. I know they're around here somewhere, so I'm going to take a little bit of time, since we've already seen most of this with the drone, and I'm going to see if I can track down those petroglyphs. Okay guys, here we are. So what I did is I looked for the highest outcropping of this uh, dark basaltic rock, which is typically where you find your petroglyphs. And there's a trail heading off this direction. So we're just gonna kind of observe these rocks real quick and see if we can find some, uh, like right here. You can just kind of make it out right there, a little one. Maybe that was a deer. 
see if we can find one that's that we can make out. Did you find one? Oh yeah, oh yeah, here, look at here guys. Here's another one, see? There's an animal, there's a deer on that one there. Let's head around this direction. We got some more over here. Always neat to find petroglyphs. Heck yeah. Oh yeah, here we are. Probably the most photographed petroglyphs on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> now I can I can add myself to the list. Oh, you got a bunch over here. Wow. My mother absolutely loves petroglyphs. So guys, um, give her all a round of applause for mom. She watches every episode. So here you go, ma. I finally got to show you some good glyphs. Uh, the sun isn't quite right at the perfect angle, but I think you get the idea. Okay. Let's go back to, yeah, isn't that neat? Yep, as a deer, and there's a bunch more right there. Cool. I like this one. This one is definitely the most noticeable right there. Even has antlers right there. All right, guys. Well, that's going to do it for today's episode of the Rich and Bar Mine. I hope you enjoyed that one. Um, after looking at all the various YouTube. Uh, channels and what they've done over the years on this site I thought I would come out here today and try to give you a little bit better overview with my drones and as well as my handheld camera walking around and showing you different things so I think you all kind of get the idea so what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna tell Laura about this one also and uh, somewhere around maybe the end of November coming into December you know throughout that time we'll come back out here we'll wrap a rope around Bob's bumper and rope down into there and see if that open stope can get us down into a drift level because if it could uh, I guarantee you no one has ever run a camera through the Rich and Bar Mine. It's never happened. So I think that'd be a lot of fun to do. All right, well, I'm going to head on out of here. The interstate's not too far away. This place is pretty easy to find. And I'll see you all again next Saturday. Okay, take care, everybody. Bye-bye.